Right, we're going to talk about oxides today, and basically oxides can be categorized into four different types of oxides. There can be acidic oxides, basic oxides, neutral oxides, and amphoteric oxides. Now, what are acidic oxides? Well, acidic oxides are mainly non-metals bonded with an oxide to form that acidic oxide. And how do we know that acidic oxides are acidic? Well, it's when you take this acid oxides and you put it in, a, in the presence of a damp litmus paper and it should turn red or remain red, all right? Now, how do you make these oxides? Well, you get sulfur and you burn it in the presence of oxygen, for example, and you, you get blue flames. And what you get is sulfur dioxide which is a colorless gas. You can do the same with carbon. You burn it, you get a red glow, right? And you get carbon dioxide, which is also a colorless gas. And then you can do it with phosphorus. You burn it in the presence of oxygen, you get a yellow flame, and you get diphosphorus pentoxide, which is a white solid. Now, what happens chemically, or, or, or how do we write the equation of what happens when you put this oxide in the presence of a damp litmus paper? So, I'm going to use sulfur dioxide as the example, all right? So, sulfur dioxide, when you put it in the presence of water, which can be uh, attached to the lip, damp litmus paper, right? It will turn and become sulfurous acid. So, that's how we know that this is an acidic oxide. Basic oxides, they are usually made of metal and the oxide. So the cation is the metal and the anion is the oxide, the non-metal. So these oxides, when you put it in the presence of water, will turn the damp lip, uh, or damp litmus paper, you will turn the litmus paper blue or the litmus paper will stay blue. Now how do you make these oxides? Well, take a whole bunch of metal, burn it in the presence of oxygen, and you get the oxides. So here I have sodium, burn it, in the presence of oxygen, you get yellow flame and sodium oxide. Magnesium, you get white flame and you get magnesium oxide. Calcium, red flame, calcium oxide. You can also do this with transition metals. Iron, put burn it in the presence of oxygen, you get a yellow spark. Not really like that, but you get iron to oxide. Copper, you won't really get anything that's glowing, but you will just suddenly become black. And that black stuff, that black solid, is copper two oxide. Oh, and iron oxide is kind of like blue black solids. So what happens chemically, or how do I express this is a basic oxide uh, using an equation, or yeah, an equation. So let's just take the um, sodium oxide as an example. All right, I put it in the presence of a damp litmus paper, which has water in it, and I will get sodium hydroxide. So this sodium hydroxide we know is basic or alkalinic. And there you go, get a blue litmus paper. The third category of oxides are neutral oxides. Neutral oxides do not react with acids, no bases. They just don't really give out any of those red or blue character, all right, or properties. You won't show that character. Uh, examples of uh, neutral oxides are water, carbon monoxide, and mm, nitrogen monoxide, all right? So they don't react with acids or alkalis. Finally, let's talk about amphoteric oxides. Amphoteric oxides are very special. They can behave like an acidic oxide and they can also behave like a basic oxide. They're both acidic and basic. The classic example used in first year level chemistry is zinc and aluminum. Zinc oxide can react with an acid to form a salt and water. So this means that zinc, this here, in this instance, acts like a basic oxide because it's reacting with an acid to form salt and water, okay? On another example, zinc oxide can react with sodium hydroxide, which is a base, 
an alkali. So zinc oxide in this instance is an acid. And what you get is zinc, uh, sodium zincate, which is a very complex salt. And you get water as well. Now, when we do identification of unknown salts, uh, and if it's a salt that is made of zinc and aluminum, you can do this test because of the amphoteric nature of zinc and aluminum. All right, you can do a classic test with to identify whether the cation in the unknown salt is zinc or aluminum. So I'm going to use zinc as an example. So we have zinc chloride. Remember, that's a salt. You put a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide, and what you will know is this precipitation that's coming out that will just come out in the test tube. That precipitation is actually zinc hydroxide, and that's a solid. And you also get zinc, I mean sodium chloride, and we know that that's an aqueous salt, or a soluble salt. So that doesn't, you won't see the presence of the sodium chloride, but you do see the precipitate zinc hydroxide. Now, with zinc hydroxide being present, you can add lots, lots more sodium hydroxide to just kind of like overflow the zinc hydroxide and overpower the zinc hydroxide and cause the zinc hydroxide to react with the sodium hydroxide because the hydroxide now has completely reacted with all the zinc chloride to form the zinc hydroxide. So what you have left with is zinc hydroxide that can only react with the um, sodium hydroxide. And what you get is sodium zincate. Again, the same thing that you get up here. And there we go. You, you also get water. So in this instance, you convert the salt from zinc chloride to an acidic ox oxide, or in this case, an acidic hydroxide, which is the zinc hydroxide. React the acidic oxide in the form of zinc hydroxide with an alkali, and you get the salt and water. So there you go. That's the unit on hydroxides.